<clears throat> What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Unhinged Talk. As usual, I'm your host, Patrick Hennessy. Today, I'm joined by Brian DeGennaro, Brandon Kramer, and our special guest for today, pitcher for the AA Yankees, Sean Semple. How are you guys doing today? Good. Pretty good. Doing good, doing good. Good. So uh, today, I mean, usually it's just the four of us, and they're just writers, so they don't really have great input when it comes to baseball. But today, I'm happy to bring Sean aboard. He could probably give us some better insight than uh, Brandon and Brian usually do. So uh, honestly, like, let's just get right into it here. Uh, very interested about Sean and his career in the minor leagues. Uh, let's just have some fun with this. So uh, Sean, where did you grow up? So uh, I'm from like Southern Jersey. So I grew up in Southern Jersey about about 20 minutes away from Philadelphia, right over Commodore, ba- Commodore Barry Bridge, what it's called. But uh, I, I grew up in Swedesboro, New Jersey, small town. Um, kind of just grew up there, you know, did everything there till I got to college. And I was in New Jersey for everywhere, everywhere I was till college. You know, college, I went to Louisiana and uh, huge culture shifts, you know. Just kind of packed up everything uh and headed there yeah um so jersey if you're in jersey that mm-hmm. either means you're a yankee fan or a philly fan so i grew up a big uh big time philly fan got it big time got philly it. sports fan so who's your favorite player um i mean are we talking just phillies right like baseball yeah i would say so uh, I mean, as a baseball player, I'm allowed to have I feel like two favorites for a pitcher and a position player. Yeah, so that's fair. Position player, I would say Chase Utley. I'm a huge Chase Utley. He player. made Cece his bitch. It was bad, man. But like, you know, I don't never bring that up if I ever had a talk, like a talk with Cece because like, <laughs> I listen to I listen to Cece's podcast. Like, I think Cece's the coolest guy ever. I would never bring it up to him. But yes, you should at the time in '09. When I was a young Phillies fan, Chase Elliott just literally had like two home runs a game. And I was like, this dude is forever my favorite Philly. But what I was going to say for pitcher was he was with with the Phillies for only a short amount of time, but it was Roy Holiday. Because like, that was when I was like really getting into like pitching in high school um not, it wasn't high school but like I was getting way more into baseball and I was like learning little things about baseball about like um like cool calm like collective manner on the mound when pitching and like when I'm a little kid you know I'm like throwing and trying to throw strikes and I'm getting all pissed off and huffing and puffing nothing's gonna work that way and like you know you see people in the big league still doing that like it's not ever gonna work but like Roy Holiday was the first one that was like like you gotta calm yourself on the mound and like have that mental side of it before going deeper you know in my career yeah um one question about Chase Utley yeah was the slide clean or dirty it was super dirty but dude like (laughs) baseball 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 dirty you know yeah I mean like like there's dirty things that happen in baseball games you know for People want to win. You know, yeah, I Albert agree. Bell. Albert Bell. You see that video? Oh, the second when, when body is the second yeah. base. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm going to do to Brian next time I see him. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so you mentioned that you went to college in New Orleans, right? Mm-hmm. So now from the point where you're playing in college to the point where you transition to the lower levels of minor league baseball – What's the difference between those two? Like, how difficult is the transition? So, um, definitely, like, the only thing I had in college was a fastball. Like, curveball was never there. Changeup was just a slow fastball. And uh, that's it. But I would just blow doors away, like, in college because I had a good fastball. Then I got to – when I got to Staten Island, my first year, like full year of baseball, because I played in the GCL, it's actually a GCL East Yankees champion. So, I mean, damn, I look at a, you. A ring in the minor <laughs> league. Yeah, first, first year. But, um, no, that was actually fun. I got some, I got some teammates and we still talk about that. It's just like, we're playing in like hundred degree weather in Florida and, uh, 
it's brutal, man. Like it's hot out there and there's no fans. There's nobody, anybody. It's just I like, can imagine. you know, 18 year olds or like us fresh college guys. And then, uh, but there was more, that was more like college, but like the next year in Staten Island, people started hitting the fastball. People started, you know, if you didn't have that other off speed pitch that you can do for a strike, like if you had an off speed pitch, like any, anything, even if it was bad, you could throw it like for a strike, you could throw it in there all day in a season, like, like in, in Staten Island. Yeah. But like when you go up to into single A, um, they're going to hit your fastball. That's the only thing that's working. Yeah. But like, it just gets, they, the hitters get better and better at being able to hit your fastball consistently. I feel like, and uh, you know, hit mistakes. Like you just got to be able to, you know, consistently stay in the zone, but not hit like their heat maps. You know what I mean, yeah. yeah, that's all it is, man. Like, I mean, honestly, like as long as you don't hit their heat maps, you can practice that all day and you can throw three pitches for strikes like you're dominant like that yeah. that it's just plain and simple yeah so do you have those three pitches that you're like confident in that you could get hitters out with so um i definitely have two i'm pretty confident in um well fastball fastball and curveball i'm pretty confident in and my slider but my slider is more like a cutter like a like more hard slider so very easy for me to throw because it's like a fastball. But um, I have four pitches in the mix. Uh, I don't know what's working each day. Everything was kind of you know, really working out in, in spring training. It just sucks that everything got shut down. Yeah. But, um, but hey, I'm, I'm doing what I can to maintain that. But, yeah, no, I'm, I would say I have four pitches that I've really kind of – been searching for my entire minor league career and uh, finally kind of figured out what I'm like and what I need and the different arm slots. Like, trust me, I've been trying, I tried probably five different grips for a curveball change up in the last two years. Like it just, wow. it's hard to find. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, Brandon, I know you wanted to ask uh, Sean regarding Tommy John surgery. Yeah. So I read that you, so a lot of uh, honestly, a lot more frequent now. You're seeing it with mainly the oh, fireball yeah. pitchers kind of getting it. So, can you just talk about like when you first found out you needed it? What went through your head? So, um, well, definitely when I found out that I needed it, I was like, "Damn, like this, that sucks." Like, pretty upset. Um, but it was like, it was a partial tear. But it was like, it was like you can either rehab for a couple months and try it again or you can get it and have a better chance of like being color but I'll make the surgery I'll make the surgery and just go through with it. But it did suck. Definitely suck. Yeah, I had a shoulder th- or shoulder surgery so i know that gut feeling of like shit it's like yeah it's like it's like um do i want to keep trying to rehab this and what if the rehab doesn't work and it happens again but um but i really didn't even know i had it initially because um what it was is that like i could keep throwing like i did it in a game but i could keep throwing but it was like the last like little extension on my fastball where it was like like it hurt. Yeah. I was like, oof. And um that's when I knew something was up and then in like a couple like a week before May thirteenth, two thousand thirteen was the day I got my surgery, I'm pretty sure. So it was like a week before that where I was like, All right, let's do it. A week later, got it. What was wow. it like rehabbing from that? Like what was the process like? Was it really more difficult than you were expecting? Was it like what you were expecting? What do you think? I mean, I didn't know what to honestly expect. I never had like a big sports injury before. And um, with that, uh, it was, it was difficult, but like, you know, I kind of, it, it's not like I didn't enjoy it, but like I, I enjoyed it in the matter of fact of like learning things that can help me uh, make my arm 
stronger and stuff like that. Like I've, I've learned so much. Like I went to, I didn't finish my college out, but I got drafted after my third year. And that's what I was working towards is being like in, um, what's it called? In like in sports science, like working with athletes with like, for you know, performance, like high performance athletes, like baseball players and stuff like that on like how to exercise correctly and stuff like that. So you don't get injured. I was doing like, you know, heavy lifting and, but I would, but the big thing for me of like how I got TJ was because I was overused plain and simple. Like yeah. uh, I threw a nine inning game in high school and I lost wow. it on a walk off. You only play, you only play seven innings in high school. Yeah. yeah I pitched all crazy. nine and lost in a walk off. So it's like, it was definitely overused, man. Yeah. And I think like, that's the reason why there's, just a uh, rampant so, yeah. yeah it's it's oh, yeah. rampant because these kids are they're playing from such a young age now and they're playing so much more than they used to and it they're gets to a point where their arms just can't handle it yeah which and is really dumb they're doing travel teams and high school yep. teams and it just gets to a point where they can't handle it anymore coaches exactly, i just man. figured out in high school they just throw you out there like you have a fastball you can get hitters out you're gonna pitch no matter what like you yeah can't they'll really throw you in there for wins you know but you know i know today a lot more people are um very aware of it but uh i mean people still get taken advantage of you know like yeah i'm sure it just happens but um not it just happens but it happens you know, it's yeah, sad. Yeah. but um that's why, like, when I got TJ, like, it brought, like, a whole new world to me where I knew what to do to strengthen my arm. Like, now, like, after throwing and doing everything, I do my arm recovery every day. I do all that stuff every single day just to make sure my arm feels good. And, you know, knock yeah. on wood, it's been feeling good. Yeah, that's good. So, I know before we discussed, uh, you went through four levels of the minor leagues last year in 2019. Uh, one of them included one game in Scranton, which you kind of knew was going to be like a one, one time kind of gig. Do you want to explain like what that experience was like yeah. going from single A to triple A in just one day and finding out? Uh, I was, it was honestly like just a, it was a crazy, crazy day, but very like insightful and like kind of smack of like uh smack on the face of like, what I need to realize what I need to do as a baseball player if I want to succeed in the next level. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I wake up that morning really early, you know, get the, get the Syracuse. Um, it was just like a, just a quick, like a normal day. I get there, you know, the, the game kind of gets pushed back a little bit. So, um, just, I'm in the clubhouse with guys that are like, you know, big leaguers and, or like high high prospects stuff like that. I'm trying to like keep my cool. I knew a couple guys <laughs> there already, but like still, I didn't want to like step on anyone's toes. I just like kind of kept cool and just you know. But everyone was cool and like came up to me and like said what's up. And I kind of recognized some people and some people knew me just from maybe the year before that, or just like around the complex during spring training. But um, no man, like I got out there, the opposing pitcher. Uh, let up like nine runs in the first inning like they hit like three home runs it was like Mike Ford Ryan McBroom and like mm-hmm. someone else like just these first off that triple a team holy cow like just filled with talent like yeah. and that game showed it but um I go at I go back out in the second inning I let up a couple I think a couple runs like two runs or something like that and I go back out again I think I let up one and then I go in the fourth inning, and it's just like floodgates open. I can't throw anything other than a, a fastball, and then that just keeps getting hit. And then yeah. I let up a, a ground rule double to Tim Tebow, and <laughs> you know it's just. And then, then then there was a rain delay, and then we went back out there to play the rest of it. And I don't think we did. I don't think we got done until like midnight or something like that. And then I wow. flew out the next day at like. I don't know, eight thirty or something like that. Back yeah, to that's Tampa. crazy. But um, what was it like facing Tebow? Like, was it surreal when like you see Tim Tebow step into the opposing batter's box? Like, well, yeah, definitely, definitely, because it's always like you know, Tim, it's Tim Tebow, it's Tim Tebow. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not a Tebow hater. You know, I like Tebow. Yeah. Like, I think he's a cool. I think he's an awesome guy. 
but it's also like I don't want to let up a hit off Tebow <laughs> because I know I'm a good pitcher and like I want to get Tebow out and yeah. I know he's not the best with off speed because you can plainly sim- simple look at his like his hitting stats and then he's just not the best at breaking balls and yeah. I do what do I do I throw him a first pitch fastball which he rips for a ground rule double so <laughs> I mean it's honestly my fault so yeah um so heading into 2020 if if the season even starts uh the plan is you're likely going to be in Trenton I mean knock on wood you never want to like say where you're going to be yeah. you know no one really ever knows but, but I I I think I be, you know I definitely belong in Trenton again you know where I where I ended last year Yeah are you big into like your um looking in deep into your stats and looking at all the advanced analytics Um so, I mean, like, I try to use analytics as much as I can. Definitely, um, mm. I definitely want to know when my fastball is, uh, like, spinning efficiently and, like, if it uh, has, like, good break Z to it, which is, like, the ride. Because that's the kind of fastball I had. It's, like, a very heavy fastball that stays up and hitters swing over it okay. or swing under it because they think it's falling down. But, um I lost track of what I was even talking about there. <laughs> You're talking about um, uh, advanced analytics, I think. Yeah, about the analytics. I mean, like I, I try as much as I can to stay with it. They actually just uh, don't laugh when I tell you, but they actually just made a whole analytics baseball like pitching. It's actually very cool, very very cool, and te- really? like technological, like tech like a bunch of technology and stuff in it, like rap sodos, uh, edgeronic, uh high-speed cameras and stuff like that. So you can see like the break on your curveballs and stuff. Wow. And we would use it for every bullpen, but they call it, they call it the gas station. And like... <laughs> the gas station? <laughs> um, it's not... It, it was kind of forced on to it, but like uh, we didn't really have like a say. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. it definitely helps you throw harder. That's definitely the truth of it. But um, As long as it works. Like way, the, yeah, it, <laughs> it definitely, it's definitely going to work. And it does relate to what it's doing. But it's just kind of corny. But, you know, whatever. But it's got all the weighted balls, like all the driveline stuff. But um, analytics-wise, I, uh, yeah, I, you, you have to. You have to yeah. look at that stuff. You know, if you want to be ahead of the, the guy next to you, you got to keep up with all that stuff yeah um so now like as we talk about like where you where you are heading into 2020 this is just your personal opinion do you think that baseball is going to be played this season um hey man i anyone can make an opinion you know this is what i'm hoping for that's definitely what i'm hoping for um is that we get back within you know, hopefully like two months and we yeah. can like uh, play like a half half season or like a, a shorter season and uh, just put like an asterisk next to the season. Just let us at least yeah. like play a little bit, definitely get our innings in, stuff like that. So like, you know, this whole season, it's not just a, just like a wash. Like I, me, like as a pitcher, like every year you need to throw more and more and more to get custom to throwing more and more innings every year. You know, these, these big league starters are going over 200 innings a year. Like, I, I've never been over, like, 150 innings a year. So, mm-hmm. I need that workload so I can show that I can throw as many innings as these guys are, too. You know, it's just – Of course, yeah. And yeah, I think, You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and what a lot of people aren't realizing when they're suggesting, like, oh, MLB could just play into, like, November – they forget that minor league baseball, I think you guys finish at like the end of August, right? So yeah, minor league, minor league's like, so it, it differs. So in Charleston one year, it ended, it was like September 4th. And then mm. last year we played playoffs in double A. We ended up winning it. And I think the last day was the, uh, it was like the 14th or something like that. So September 14th. And yeah. I'm, I'm getting married November 14th like oh really congrats of, the, of this congrats. i appreciate that so of this year so it's like they can't they can't move back to yeah. season like i have <laughs> yeah. a wedding like, <laughs> like i can't 
but but like also it's going into other baseball it's, I mean, other sports it's going to go into football yeah. it's going to go in it, i don't think it would work you know yeah i that's why i'm like I'm cautiously optimistic when it comes to like hearing rumors that the season starting July. I'll believe it when I see yeah. it, to be honest. I hope what they do though is like when they find out that we can start going back at it is that we don't need a big long spring training. We like if if people were serious if people are serious about like keeping in shape and stuff like that during this whole coronavirus, which you know they, they told you to do, yeah. then you should be able to get back into the program two three weeks like three weeks max spring training and then get into it because like you do need to throw bullpens you need to make sure that your arms are ready to go for the season because if if you just go right into it you're gonna blow out you know you gotta like warm your arm up slowly which we that's what we were doing in spring training i mean i was i was warmed up for about four innings of work but they do it slowly but still it's like you need that little training, but yeah. it's just hard to tell how hard to tell what they're going to do. Yeah. So what have you been what, doing like during this time? I mean, a lot of hanging out. Um, <laughs> so my fiance is still working. They're not, they're not, we're not under lockdown here. And I guess like, it's like lockdown in Arkansas, yeah. like that, but like she still has to go to work, which is like kind of, like not cool at all because people were getting sent home yeah but um i wake up early um i i I do a little work like on the side i try doing this thing with like you know helping people get better energy bills and stuff like that but i do that in the morning and uh, maybe play a little 2k um (laughs) or whatever xbox whatever i'm playing and then uh I, i do like a bunch of band workouts and i have a bunch of like workout stuff that i can simulate what I was doing in uh, spring training, which, you know, it's actually working really well. The band's like, you know, they still kick your ass. So, so that, that's been good. And um, just been honestly trying to stay busy, but stay busy at home, you know, yeah, just trying like to stay in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, doing zoom, I do it with my trainer and like uh, a bunch of people who work out with my trainer and like talk to them and give them insight of what I'm doing. Like, uh, you know, I, I do what I got to do. I do my, my throwing. I had my drive line baseballs and stuff like that. Just doing what I can, you know. To, just uh, crazy what everything has come to. <laughs> everything's yeah, on Zoom. I mean, everything's I mean, digital. Yeah. I mean, shit, I mean, it's a good time to be in something like this. Not, I mean, it's never a good time to be under quarantine, but we have all this stuff where we can still communicate to people yeah. and, do stuff like this, you know. Yeah. You know, back in the day, we would have to all meet up and do this type of thing. But now, you know, we can we can zoom and do what we gotta do. Yeah. Um. So as we were talking about the quarantine, here's an interesting question for you. Uh, yeah. Out of all your teammates that you've had throughout minor league baseball, give me one player that you would want to be quarantined with, and one player you would not want to be quarantined with under any circumstances. Well, it's funny you asked me this question because we were under quarantine or isolation with the Miley League Yankees because there was a... Oh, that's right. um, Yeah, there was a confirmed case in our locker room. So we Uh stayed in. We were in for two weeks and we didn't do anything. But I was with Jansen Junk and Ron Marinasio. And uh, it's got to be definitely between the two of those of who I want to be with. Mm-hmm. And uh, if anyone who watches this and like, you know, who is friends with me in the organization and even him would understand this, but the one guy I wouldn't want to be with, his name's uh, Kyle Zurek. He, uh, Kyle Zurek? <laughs> yeah, Kyle Zurek. He just, you know, he can talk a little bit too much sometimes, but <laughs> he's, a good, he's, a, he's a good dude and he's a, he's a big fan around the, around the uh, organization. But yeah, I mean, he knows it. <laughs> All the guys know it. You know, he, he can take it a little bit too far sometimes. So if we bring Kyle on here one day, would he say you would be his person he wouldn't want to quarantine with? No. No, I, I wouldn't be that guy. He, he, would, he would have. I'm sure he would have a different guy. But I honestly, I honestly say that because it's like I know him well. I actually lived yeah. with him before. Like oh, okay. I lived with him when I, when I was in Tampa. So, I mean, it. he wasn't a bad roommate. It's, it's more like a joke because, you know, he – Sometimes it's just like, okay, Kyle, like, 
Let us talk now. <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to have to uh, invite Kyle on here one day and find out the truth. But uh, Br- I think Brandon wanted to know about uh, Rookie in, Tr- in Trenton. Rookie. Yeah. How's Rookie? Rookie's, uh, rookie's like a big leaguer of like like – like he's like in himself, he's a big leaguer. You know, he'll walk through the clubhouse and it's like, oh, what's up, rookie? Like, what's up? What's up? And he's just like, so like, I'm just That's gonna keep walking by. That's the best thing ever. <laughs> like, you, if you don't have a treat, like, I'm not gonna come up to you. Like, if you got a treat, you know, I'll, I'll be cool with you. But he knows his place. He knows that he's who he is. You know, it's fun. He's a, but that's he's, a he's great though. That's like, awesome. how could he be that well trained to like be a bat dog? It's incredible. That's it's a family. It's a family of them. Yeah, yeah. And all the, the other one passed away, right? Well, it was three. Like, they walk him around every day. Yeah. Rookie's yeah, the yeah, only I mean, one it, left. Yeah. It's, it yeah. Was, so, oh. was it Derby Chase? It was Chase Derby and then Rookie. And then Rookie, and now there's um, there's another one now. And Dash, I think they called him Dash. Dash. Yeah, Brandon knows all about them. Well, it was all over. Like <laughs> when when baseball was going into quarantine, they're all talking about the new bat dog, and there's like there's like a thirty for thirty, like a like a short one on the actual cause it started with Chase. Then yeah. then they brought along Chase's actual son, so it was Derby. Then when Chase died, um, yeah, rookie then came along, and then they trained rookie. But yeah, rookie rookie's getting old. Game, he like ran wild. <laughs> yeah, Damn. they like we were, everyone was uh disappointed do you guys think the, the goal Bron- is to ever uh, bring one of them to the bronx <laughs> i, don't I would know. love I mean, that i mean if anything they need to bring tommy have you guys met tommy before oh no. No. isn't that the bat boy yes he's a bat boy tommy's incredible guy you know there's something about like all the other there's something about charleston for me like personally charleston and um and trenton were like the greatest places to play just the atmosphere in charleston and like and atmosphere in trenton it's like you know people care there like about baseball like a lot of people yeah. like really care about baseball it's really tough in the in the single a uh with the tampa tarpons because not a lot of baseball fans come out to those games in florida and usually it's like 100 degrees out and there's not a lot of fans but like the northeast of baseball like when i got there it was just like you know there was more fans but like like Trenton was just like I guess maybe because I'm from New Jersey, it was just home sweet home. Uh, it was just awesome, man. Like great time. Tommy was a great. It was great there, and same with rookie. Like just overall, just a great affiliate to play with. Yeah. Um, I have one final question to wrap everything up with. You ready? Yeah. So I'm gonna put you in another scenario. You said your two favorite players growing up, hitters, were uh, Chase Hutley and Ryan Howard, right? Yes. If those two stepped in the batter's box, who would you think had what you would have a better chance of striking out? Ryan Howard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what got, would be your uh, your go to plan? It's the it's the it's the slider. I'm pretty sure the back <laughs> the back foot slider was like his like kryptonite, dude. He yeah. would just swing through that nonstop. But like, it's just so crazy how Ryan Howard fell off the face of the earth so quickly. He tore his. I'm pretty was- sure. Yeah, he went he from tore- like MVP to I think yeah. he was last seen like with a minor league deal with the Orioles a couple years ago. The and that Braves, was that. I think, or some. Yeah. I don't know, oh like yeah, that, I think but- the Braves. But it's crazy. I, did he play again after tearing but, the Achilles? He did, but he wasn't the same. Yeah. Yeah. No, he signed. He signed a big contract with the Phillies, and like, uh, he just did not perform. It was like after the '09, or it was after '08, supposedly. Like, uh, someone or like, oh no, it was '09. He made the last out of the the World Series, and he tore his Achilles. It was. He I think in, in '09. No, it was – I think I actually remember because I watched a video of it. I think it was against the Braves or the Reds. Because he yeah. tore his Achilles oh, in 2013. Yeah. It, was, it was in the World – yes, yes, yes. It was in the ALDS, yeah, it was, right? It was like a last oh. out type thing. Yeah. But it was against yeah, he, somebody. He, he was – I remember it was a ground ball and he was running out of the box and his ankle gave out. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it was against the Braves probably. Yeah, and it was Braves like a very – it was a very bad uh, – ever, ever, ever since that, it was just like not good. Yeah. 
Um, Brandon, Brian, do you have anything you want to? I, I got a question ask for everyone. Mm-hmm. Go. Uh, it's a pitching question, actually. So you, you, it's start, bench, and cut. So I've narrowed it down to start, bench, and cut. Maddox, Pedro Martinez, and Randy Johnson, all in their prime. Oh, that's a start, good question. Bench, and cut. Oof. Who? It was. It was Maddox. Maddox, Maddox Pedro, and Randy Johnson. Are we talking like Game Seven of the World Series? Yeah, we're doing start bench cut, but they're all in their prime. So who you start and who you bench? I think this is easy for me to be honest. I'm starting Pedro. I'm benching Randy, and I'm cutting Maddox. I got. I I actually I start Maddox because when I started pitching, that's what I said too. Because I modeled my game after Maddox because I never threw hard. So and then I would bench Pedro and cut Randy Johnson. Yeah, that's where I was going with it. That's what I. Uh, Randy Johnson and Pedro were very, very hard to do, but Greg Maddox yeah. was definitely a start for me. Damn. Yeah, I, I, mean, I agree I forget, with that. I forget there's a YouTube clip of uh, Greg Maddox going through against the Cubs. I think that's is it the I, one with yes. the 76 or uh, yeah, 76 pitch game, and he, it's the clip of when uh, he sets up on an inside two seam and the catcher does not even move an inch. Yeah. Incredible, and there's also another. There was another one where he would just dot off like five inches off the plate, and he would get it every time, and like hitters would just freak out, like because he could hit it every time. He would just he would just keep just dotting up right there. It was incredible. But uh, Brandon was saying about um, about Maddox is like that's what I was like too. Like me trying to after getting TJ, um, my well, it was, I guess, my, yeah, it was my junior year of high school. So I had, I was supposed to go to, um, I had some big, like, offers um, and, like, still looking into it. I was still young. But, like, um, when I got to UNO, University of New Orleans, I went on there, like, a week before. Like, they, they I was going to go to JUCO. And then they were like, yo, like, come here. Like, we'll give you some, like, good money and, you know, you can play. And I'm like, all right, I'm there. And I go there, and I'm still recovering from TJ, so I have to learn how to, like, locate my fastball. And honestly, I was just really good at locating my fastball in the strike zone. So it was, like, I immediately was a Friday night guy there, and I was only, like, 85, 86. I wasn't throwing that hard, but, like, I was able to throw my fastball consistently with an all right curveball. And then I started throwing harder and harder every year, and the curveball started going away because I wasn't, because my arm speed was up and stuff like that. So, like, I was trying to be like Maddox. I love Maddox. But, like, it comes to a point where you start throwing harder and harder and harder, and um, you can't control it. So, it's like you got to respect, like, Randy Johnson and stuff like that. When you're yeah. throwing it from here, swinging that thing, like, you have to, like, aim, like, aim at certain things to throw their your pitches. Like, when I'm trying to throw my curveball and I try to aim it at the mitt, I'm going to throw it at, at like, like 15 feet in front of me. I had, I had to aim at, like, the hitter's helmet. Like, it's insane. Like, that, that's how much, like, like my curveball moves, but, like, Randy Johnson's slider, that thing moves Crazy. way more. He had a, probably a aim at, like, the back, the line behind uh, the batter. Like, but Maddox, it was like, you know, it was finesse. Like, it's like throwing a change up. He was like two seam, but it was like finesse. Yeah. And then Johnson was like max effort, you know. But honestly, I feel like like the art of pinpoint control is kind of like a lost art in baseball today. It's more of just like, can you throw well, 105? Everyone's trying to be a power pitcher. Yeah, and yep. then you got, you got Noah Syndergaard trying to throw like 105 every season, and that's the reason he keeps yeah. getting hurt. He. He works out like a like a weightlifter in the off season, trying to get his fastball mm-hmm. up one or two miles per hour, and then he just yeah, man. can't pitch a full season, and it's it's a terrible philosophy. Because yeah, when you're coming out of high school, all they say is, "Can you throw a fastball? Can you throw it in the zone?" I mean, yeah. I I never threw hard. I only threw maybe mid seventies, low seventies, mm-hmm. maybe upper seventies my senior year. But I mean, I just my mom and my grandfather taught me coming up was. It was always when I was throwing with my grandfather, he was like, I'm going to keep my glove here. You need to hit it 10 times before we can go back inside. Yeah. Um, it was all about control because they always told me the best pitch is a well-placed fastball. 
So oh, yeah. it but still everyone is. else, I mean, they're just like, can you throw? Can you throw strikes? You're in. Yep. Now, and it's like funny you say that because like that's how, it, that's how it was when I was in high school. My junior year, I was like, well, so I don't need a little background. Like my, um, my freshman year of high school, I was a little bit, I was pretty overweight. Like I was a big dude and I loved baseball. I was good at it, but like I was mid seventies, uh, mid seventies with my fastball. And like, I wanted to make varsity, you know? So I started working with a guy, his, his name's Sean Bussey. And he's like my mentor now, like, or he is my mentor for sure. But, um, that man, like we, I met him and he's very intimidating dude. Like if you walk up to him, he's a big man. You know, he looks like he, be, he belongs on the, the line for the Eagles, you know, like he yeah. looks like defensive end and I meet him and um, he's like, Hey, you want to like work out with me? I'm like, sure. You know, and then I meet him at open field and we're running gassers and long tossing as far as we can and stuff like that. And for a year, in a year, I gained like, or in like two years or so, I work with him and I, I gain like like 15 miles an hour on my fastball. I, wow. I was throwing 90 my junior year of, of uh, high school. And that's when I got overused because I was, I was good. Like, you know, I was working really hard. I had a good curveball. I had good fastball, stuff like that. And um, yeah, I, you know, I just, yeah. Strength and conditioning, just they don't like that. They don't use it, you know, especially at least for the high school I was at. A lot of, Kids it's all on your own. You gotta yeah. know. That's how a lot because of like kids are. nowadays they're trying to rip those weighted balls and they don't know how to correctly do them. I personally like I do them, but I I was scared to start doing them until I knew the right things to do. Like they gave me a program in spring training. Like it was a this year for spring training for pitchers for Yankees is hands down the most um, scientific like technology like new based stats about baseball and and programs and stuff like that i was doing my my driveline weighted baseballs and um they were teaching me my hips my hips weren't efficient with my pitching i i fixed my hips up and my when i get there i was 87 to 80 88 and then i threw a live batting practice after changing my hips for like two weeks and uh i was like 93 94 yeah, you know, just ninety two, ninety four, just sitting it because I have it. I know I can throw hard. It's just my legs. I didn't have an efficient power source, if that makes sense, of my legs. Like it was Chapman. all arm. Chapman's all legs. Chapman, yeah. Chapman yeah. ridiculous. I thought I thought I was, but I wasn't getting like a proper like lockout on my front knee on my lead leg. Yeah. So um, I wasn't able to like get of my body and like get that torque, but. I was work. I was working on that this spring training. And I finally started getting it, and boy, like my curveball, my slider, fastball, changeup, all my spin rates were going up. All my efficiency was good. Like, you know, this is definitely this was definitely the best year I felt like in spring training because last year in Trenton, after finishing the year, it kind of left me knowing what I needed to work on specifically. And I really got after it this off season and uh, came into this year with the open. You know, just super open, um, ready to you know work with anything. And they told me that, and I implemented it into my throwing program. And uh, you know, it sucks that we got cut, but you know, at least I know what I need to do to maintain that. So when we get back, I can uh, you know just pick up where I left. Yeah. Um, I have a little fun fact. I'm not sure how true this is. I know we were talking about Randy Johnson before, but um. I don't know if you guys heard this too, but I think I read somewhere that the whole remember the All Star Game thing with Larry Walker, mm-hmm. where uh, he flipped his helmet, went to the other batter's box after he threw bottom. I read that that was planned beforehand. Did you guys see that? Could have been. No, I mean, no. I, I, when, I, know. when I saw that, it kind of like broke my heart because I always thought that, that was <laughs> such like an unnatural yeah. fun baseball moment. It's like one of those things like, oh, that you okay. could just like believe, you know, like yeah, it's like it's like, like finding out like I WWE really is fake. To that <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was disappointed. Yeah. But whatever. Um, yeah, I want to say that we touched on everything uh, that we want to hit on today. Um, yeah. It was awesome having you join us, Sean. Uh, yeah, I appreciate definitely it. Definitely a nice change up. Do it again. Like I'm here.
Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially with us having nothing better to do over the next couple months, probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, love, I love talking baseball too, man. And like uh, the Yankees, like they just have a lot, a lot, a lot people will know about, you know, yeah. with like their technology and like how they train pitchers. And like, to be honest, like when I got drafted till now, like the amount of baseball growth I've learned, like the amount of knowledge I've learned and how much better I've gotten over the years has been like insane because yeah. of what the Yankees have to offer me. And I take all that and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to make myself a better player. You know, I'm yeah. trying to make it, you know, it's make it or, or, or break it, you know? Yeah. It's, and that's the thing. I'm not, like, I'm not trying to be in the minor leagues for years, for yeah. a bunch of years. You know, I want to make it. Yeah. And fans really like enjoy hearing like perspective from you because they don't really understand like what goes into like, the life and career of a minor league baseball player. Like they really only yeah, know about you guys once on you own. do hit the majors. Yeah. It's a tremendous amount of work and adversity and constant changing between levels. Yeah, going to get there, for one day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, man. Like once you get yeah. there, it's like you continue what you were doing, but like, it, obviously it's a lot more laid back because you know, you're making a lot more money. You're, yeah. you're not really worrying about that type of stuff. You can afford like, you know, you don't have to worry about any, honestly you really don't have to worry about a lot anymore yeah. but in the minor league you have a lot that you have to worry about and one of them is like you know making sure that you're you're healthy you have to stay healthy and yeah. you, you got to be eating right so like you got to have enough money to get good food and like you got to be smart and you know i've learned a lot you know about saving money about about cooking on my own and not eating out every night as a minor league baseball player like there's a lot to it man like yeah and uh you just learn a lot no. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, uh, once again, thanks for joining us. Um, do you have any Instagram or Twitter you want our viewers to follow you on? Um, I mean, I'm never really on uh, Twitter, but Instagram, it's just Sean, Sean Semps. Yeah, just Sean Semps. All right, solid. Um, I'm on well, you could, the time. <laughs> you could follow us as usual uh, on Twitter, yeah. at, on, at on Hinge New York. Uh, at unhinged media on unhinged dot media i believe our media twitter is and uh same on instagram follow me at unhinged patrick and on in, on instagram at true hennessy so many different social media handles uh brian where can they find you i'm at brian de Janeiro everywhere nice and easy. <laughs> easy, easy 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 and and brandon mine's a brandon nine and then there's four zeros and then another nine on twitter <laughs> And then on Instagram, it's uh, I don't even remember. It's a brand right, well, two zero one seven. Yeah, but I have that off the top of your head. But uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next episode, and uh, have a good night and stay safe. Yeah, you too, guys. Have a good one.